I'll be happy even if everybody else in the live show hates it. Uh, actually gonna read them now? Um, not sure if it's magical. I won't cheat, but I could. New month, new TBR. January TBR. Oh god, it's gonna fall. Oh, please, 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 please. I know that I said in multiple videos that I want shorter TBRs in 2022. But, um, starting out and swinging with 11 books on my TBR in January. However, more than half of these books are rereads, so I can cheat. <laughs> I won't cheat, but I could. A bunch of them are obligation books. Like, all, almost all the rereads, no, all of the rereads are obligation books. That's why they are on this TBR. And then uh, I have a few others. So let's just, let's just go ahead and get into it. Mm -mm -mm. First up, Guns of the Dawn by Adrian Tchaikovsky. This is the book that Alan chose for me, well, one of the books he chose for me to read when we swapped TBRs. And I loved it so much that I chose it as my pick for the Blades and Bodice Reapers book club in January. We are quarterly this year, if you missed the announcement. So instead of every single month that we're, we'd be gathering and reading, it'll be once the beginning of every quarter. So I've got January, quarter one. Then Amanda's got the beginning of quarter two in April. Then Bethany's got the beginning of quarter three in October. Oh, no, no. Mara's got the beginning of October, or quarter three in July, and Bethany's got October. Anyway, all that to say, January is me, and I picked Guns of the Dawn, which is a massively long book. I apologize. It's actually, the text is pretty big, so it's not that long. And it's really, really good. So good that I want to read it again. I fully intend to reread it. I'm not gonna cheat, even though I brought up cheating as like the first thing in this video. But um, yeah, this is basically like, I think, one of my patrons, and I think Alan described it as like Jane Austen goes to war. Uh, it's a bit like that. It's, it kind of reminds me of like North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell and Poldark in terms of like the relationship drama and the like familial drama. But then it's a bunch of like being at war and the main character is a female and she gets scripted and it's it's flintlock fantasy. And so it's, it's kind of got it all. <laughs> it's got like romantic tension, familial drama, political intrigue, lots of war. It's pretty funny at times. Like, it's kind of like ultimate bang for your buck and it's a standalone. So I'm super excited to reread it. I am, I can't imagine my fellow Blades and Bodice Rippers co-hosts hating this. Uh, stranger things have happened, but I can't imagine that they would hate this. That's why I picked it. Because in addition to me just being really happy about reading this again, I, when I read it, I was like, they would all love this. Actually, everyone would love this, but like they would really all love this. This is a book that we could all agree on. I hope. Anyway, so I'm excited to reread it. At the very least, for once, I'll be happy even if everybody else in the live show hates it. So, fair is fair. Next up is another reread, but it's The Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie. I read the entire first law and Shattered Sea in 2021, um, and we're starting again with The Blade Itself because, well, I probably would have done this anyway. <laughs> but on the podcast uh, that Bethany started and then asked me to join as a co-host, she lured me into joining by agreeing to a first law read along for the whole of 2022. So we are starting with The Blade Itself in January and we're gonna do a podcast episode on it, of course. And then in February, we're gonna do Before They're Hanged. March, we're gonna do Last Argument of Kings, etc., etc. So if you thought you got away from me announcing every single month that, as you know, I am rereading all of the first law. <laughs> Still doing that. <laughs> so back to the beginning we go. And I'm, I'm super stoked to read The Blade Itself for the fifth time. <laughs> and um, yeah, can't wait to be back with my boy Galacta. It's gonna be a good time. So yeah, check out the podcast episode when it's up. Um, I don't know what day it's going up yet, but when it does, you know, I'll I'll let y'all know via the social needs. Next up, another reread is Good Omens by Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman. Um, I actually haven't read this in years, but my patrons chose it as our buddy read um, for January. So I'm pretty stoked about that because I'm due for a reread and with the show getting a second season, um, I don't know if it's gonna come out this year. I kind of doubt it, but it might. I have no idea. But anywho, I love this book. I think it's um, Terry Pratchett and Neil Gaiman are an incredible meshing of styles. It, like that blend really, really works. And, um, but it's, it's been a while since I read this. So I'm due again for a reread. And yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about that. Next up is the book that my patrons chose for me to vlog and review for them. And Evie very kindly sent me her copy of it so I wouldn't have to buy it, 
which is really nice, but also doesn't bode well because she was getting rid of it because she didn't like it. And it was like, oh, you can just have mine. And I was like, thank you. <laughs> like actually thank you, but also, uh oh, <laughs> because it's also a really, really long book. I discovered when I received it from Evie, I was like, oh my God. And that is Mask of Mirrors by M.A. Carrick. I've said before, and I'll say it again, I need to start giving my patrons page limits for what they can suggest for me to read because, because this, what, I mean, I, I must say the floppiness of this paperback is deeply satisfying, but I really hope the contents are also deeply satisfying because otherwise, I actually don't know anything about this book, except that I've seen it around a ton. Um, I, like I've seen this cover in a bunch of people's like thumbnails for like, TBRs and reviews and wrap-ups, best of the year, worst of the year. I've seen it on Instagram. Like, I am very aware of this book existing, and I also know almost nothing about it, except that a lot of people seem to like it, but I guess some people don't, like Evie. <laughs> Con artist, we like it. Corrupt Nightmare Magic, City of Dreams. I mean, like, based on the cover alone, it's, it's definitely giving carnival vibes. So if it's like Lies of Lock Lamora-ish, I'm here for that. Um, whatever it is, I hope it's good because it's a fucking long book, guys. Why? Why? <laughs> Next up is another reread and another Gaiman book, and that is American Gods by Neil Gaiman. It's been a minute since I read this too, um, but me and Hillary from Bookborn, we're going to be buddy reading and discussing American Gods on my channel, and then we're going to be buddy reading and discussing a Murakami book on her channel next month. This just kind of happened. <laughs> Like, I don't even know what to call this. It's not like a read-along or anything. I mean, you guys are welcome to read along with us and come join in, in the conversation. But it kind of just happened because we were talking favorite authors. And then we're like, we should do this thing of reading them and, and talking about them. Oh, I think it was to do with, like, me saying I never read Murakami before. But there's an, a Murakami book that I have owned now and have wanted to read. And it's a book that she hasn't read by Murakami. But she's a big fan of Murakami. But I don't know how Gaiman got involved in this. <laughs> I, just, I have no idea how this happened, but it's happening. We're reading American Gods, uh, rereading American Gods. I believe it is a reread for both of us, but it's been quite some time for both of us. Um, but Neil Gaiman is my favorite author. Murakami is a favorite, if not her absolute favorite author. So that's kind of why this is happening. Like trying on each other's favorite authors, even though she has read American Gods before. But I've not read Murakami, but I want to anyway. <laughs> This is a thing that is occurring. American Gods will be read by us and discussed by us, and then Murakami will be read by us and discussed by us. And you guys are more than welcome to join us. Please, in fact, to do so, because it adds to the conversation. So anyway, American Gods, yes. This, don't need to explain it. Wonderful. Next up is another reread. That is Wizard's First Rule by Terry Goodkind. Bethany and I are not just rereading, well, not just reading and hosting a read-along on the podcast for First Law. On our channels, on our YouTube channels, we are hosting a read-along all year for the Sword of Truth books. The first book, Wizard's First Rule, we will be reading in January and discussing on Bethany's channel. And then next month, we'll do Stone of Tears on my channel. And then March, we'll do Blood of the Fold on Bethany's channel and so on and so forth. Until, you know, we reach book 10 and it's just me and Bethany talking to ourselves because no one cares anymore. <laughs> anyway, Wizard's First Rule is the first book in the Sword of Truth, the series that everybody loves to hate. Except for me and Bethany, who are like, you know what, this is the hill that we have chosen to die on. We love it. And we are going to be public in our love. We are not hiding anymore. <laughs> yeah. So um, join us for this. If you've never read Terry Goodkind, but you heard about him, because I doubt there's anybody that hasn't at least heard of Terry Goodkind. You've probably heard negative things. But if you just wrote it off because you only ever heard negative things, try it, maybe. I also did a whole video, um, like half a year ago, talking about the pros and cons of the Sword of Truth series. The sort of like, here's why I love it. Here's what's definitely wrong with it. Here's what's like, y'all may not like it, but I'm fine with it. <laughs> like a kind of, you know, here's what's what you're gonna get and you see so to help you decide if you'd be interested in it. So I'll leave that video link down below to help you now decide if you would like to join us for this read along. Um, but you know, you know, try something once. You never know. You never know. Next up is my Book of the Month Club book because as stated wherever I stated it, um, my plan now has escalated to always reading my Book of the Month, uh, my Book of the Month, as well as any other books I get from the previous month. So anyway, 
So my book of the month in December, therefore being read in January, was A History of Wild Places by Shea Earnshaw. Uh, I have previously seen some YA books that she's written. I believe this is her first adult book. Um, I've never read any of the YA books that she's written. I heard like lukewarm things about those. Um, this I've heard more positive things about, like not rave reviews, but like decent reviews. And I believe it's kind of like an atmospheric mystery type of thing, like a rural place and something mysterious and sinister going on that is possibly uh, somewhat magical. Um, not sure if it's magical. But anyway, it sounded vibey and intriguing. And so I will be reading it. And then <laughs> we announced that Heather and I would be reading the Wings Ring Sworn trilogy and doing a live chat to talk about it, inviting you all to also participate in a read along. And originally we were going to squeeze in the whole trilogy into like December, January. And we were like, no. And you guys were like, no, we need more time. So originally my TBR video had the first two books of that trilogy on for December. And then we were like, no, that's not enough time. So then we're gonna like stretch it out to like the first book in December, second book in January, third book in February with a chat to follow at the end. So then I was like, okay, so only the first book is really on my TBR in December. And then I didn't read either. <laughs> so now both books are on my TBR again <laughs> because I didn't read them at all in December for The Killing of Kings and the second book Upon the Fl upon the yeah Upon the Flight of the Queen. Uh, actually gonna read them now and we will chat about it in February so unless this happens again yeah I mean, in which case we'll push it again. But yeah please join us um they aren't terribly long books the third one is like just as like like the length of the first one it's not a long series um the entire trilogy was sent to both me and Heather by the publisher which is St. Martin's Press and um yeah please join us in reading them. And I will for realsies actually read it this time. Next is another reread, and that is A Feast for Crows by George R.R. R. Martin. This is the fourth book in the Song of Ice and Fire series. I am hosting the read-along of the Song of Ice and Fire series with Jimmy from the Fantasy Network and Alec from Alex Nieves. Um, we started with Game of Thrones on my channel, then we rotated through the lads, and we are back to my channel with Feast for Crows at the end of January. So if uh, you are participating in that, you are probably already aware of this. And if not, and you this is your first hearing of the fact that there is a read-along going on, well then just catch up and read all four books <laughs> in January so you can join us for the live chat on my channel. I'm super excited for this, even though Feast for Crows is my least favorite book in the Song of Ice and Fire. I'm so delighted to be hosting for that one. But it's been a while um, and I have been really enjoying revisiting these books, all of them. It's been a great experience. Being like, oh damn, like, you know what, these books, they're, they're actually so good. A Feast for Crows, I might like better the second time. Because maybe, you know, this time I've, I'm going into it well prepared for how disappointed I was originally. So like my expectations have been tempered. Um, so I might be pleasantly surprised by like, you know, it's actually, it's actually not that bad. Or I'll be miserable. We'll see. But at the very least, we get Jamie chapters. And Jamie is my favorite character. So Jamie will see me through like you did the first time. <laughs> and last is another reread. And that is The Girl in the Tower by... Catherine Arden. This is the second book in the Winter Night Trilogy. Um, the Winter Night Trilogy read-alongs being hosted by Evie on her channel and I am a co-host for Girl in the Tower. I believe the live show for it will be the very beginning of February so to give you the full month of January to read it. Girl in the Tower is my favorite in the trilogy and unlike the US covers where the Girl in the Tower is pink, it's orange in these special editions so I just feel like it's like it's right you know because this is my favorite and it's orange like the universe is aligning. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, uh, what can I say? It's an amazing book. It's an amazing series. Made top of the year. Put it on a list of series to binge. Put it on a list of top trilogies of all time. This is my favorite book in that trilogy. It's so good. This is the perfect time of year to be reading it. It's not that long. So if you missed out, uh, you definitely have time to read Bear in the Nightingale and this um, before the chat if you like need to quickly catch up. And I definitely recommend doing it because it's so good. I definitely do not recommend the audiobook because the audiobook is terrible. <laughs> but if you gotta, you gotta because it's better than not at all. So anyway, highly recommend and I'm very excited to be revisiting this amazing book. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts and feelings about what I will be reading this month. If you will be joining in in any of the various buddy reading read-alongy thingies <laughs> that will be occurring all towards the end of the month. <laughs> It will be a jam-packed end of the month. Uh, so much for trying to have less to do in 2022. <laughs> anyway, whatever you want, let me know. I post videos on Saturdays. Other end times as well, I'm definitely Saturdays. So like and subscribe. Join my Patreon if you feel so inclined. And I'll see you when I see you. Bye.